Hello and welcome back to another daily Bible reading. And this is our last daily Bible reading for this week. Mm -hmm. And I want to remind you <clears throat> that all of what we do in a week, Monday through Thursday, while you're reading, take down questions, yeah. write them out. Sunday evening at what, five I think it is now? Five mm -hmm. o'clock Sunday evening, we discuss the week priors. So the stuff that we're doing now, we'll discuss it. So, so come with questions. some questions in. Yeah, we'll answer them. And, uh, you know, you put me on the spot and see how well I do. Yeah, see how it squirms <laughs> and all that stuff. It's yeah. Fun. So, but we are in Matthew chapter 20. Um, and really, it's a continuation of the very last verse of Matthew 1930. Yes, and, and you've got this. It's not in the kingdom parables, but it's about the kingdom. Yeah. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. I can remember when I stayed with my Uncle Charlie, he'd go down to the town square in Palmetto and he'd get pick up a truckload of folks to come work for him. No. When he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius, which is basically a day's wage in common day's wages terms, uh, it's about 16 cents, but there's been a lot of inflation. For the day he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. To those he said, you also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Again, he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour, and he did the same thing. About the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why have you been standing around idle all day long? They said to him, because no one hired us. And he said, to them, you go into the vineyard also. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last group to the first. So he's calling the 11th hour folks in first. I find it interesting that he does it this way because mm, they would have to see. They have to see it. Whoa, there's a message here, isn't there? Yeah. When those hired about the 11th hour came, each one received a Daenerys. When those hired first came, they thought that they should receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they grumbled at the landowner, saying, The last men have worked only one hour. You have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the scorching heat of the day. He answered and he said to them, to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree to come with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go. But if I wish to give this last man the same as you, is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with what is my own? Or is your eye envious because I am generous? So the last shall be first and the first shall be last. That is a cool story. Yeah, and you know, the, the, one of the major overall points that Jesus has been making about discipleship is what is your... What is your desire to serve Jesus? And if your desire to serve Jesus is the reward, you will compare rewards. You will. You'll, You'll never it. be happy. You'll never be happy. And so, once again, this last shall be first and first shall be last all has to do with who are you here for? Why are you here? What are you doing? What's your relationship yes. with God? Let's, don't worry about anybody else. Yeah, exactly. Don't worry about anybody else. I don't think necessarily, <clears throat> sometimes we, you, we use this to talk about like the deathbed, you know, True. which there's a principle there. Yeah, but I don't think that's why this but is But that's true. not the point. Mm. The point of the fact is, are you the, you want to be first, be last. You want to be someone in the kingdom, serve. Serve. Every, nothing's about you. No. And when you make it about you, you miss the whole point of the kingdom. You do. And yeah. you question God, <laughs> and, which is never a good idea. And, and if God, I mean, God wants to do whatever he wants yeah. with what he okay, has. Okay, then. <laughs> you wouldn't even worry about it if your heart was right. Well, and it's interesting because, remember, Jesus already said to the one who's given much, you know, more will be given to mm -hmm. him. Those who are blessed. So J Jesus will do as he does He'll with sort talents. It out. Yeah. He'll sort it out. You got to worry about your relationship with God. And, and, and whatever the reward is, we're going to be like totally happy with it, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that's a pretty easy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> parable. Um, I'll let you read this next section, 19, and then I'll take over in 20. Sure. All right. 17? Yep, 17 to 19. As Jesus was about to go up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside by themselves. And Jerusalem's a big point that they're aiming for, for the big finis. Yep. And he says to them, uh, Behold, we're going up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priest and the scribes, 
and they will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles, the Romans as we know, to mock and scourge and crucify him. And here he says that part that nobody listens to. On the third day, he will be raised up. And, you know, so this kind of confirms all what Jesus, all the suspicions that we've had. If you've been reading, mm -hmm. when the Pharisees and scribes come to ask Jesus questions, they're not coming to ask legitimate questions. Let's get this guy. They're trying to formulate a case right. against Jesus. And they come out with false witnesses and everything down the line. He said this, he said that, he did this, he did that. It's all bogus, but they yeah. do it. Or they'll take something that he did say yeah, and completely twist it yes. out of context, which is what everybody does today. Yes. Just turn on the news. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> turn on the news. Don't get me started. But Jesus is reassuring that, you know, the hope, putting your faith in God, though he's dying, he's going to die, he's going to be raised, but they just don't get it. And really, if they had gotten it, they'd say, well, okay, because then people are going to really, really, really have something to draw them to you more than they've had before. And, and, and this got, kind of goes back to the reward of even in the labors in the vineyard. This payment that we're receiving is what? It's, it's not money. No, it's the blood of Jesus. And the fact that Jesus who shed it can give it to whoever give he wills. Give a value to that. Yeah. Yeah, and to, and to think that you actually deserve it by working a day's... Yeah, I worked a long time. I deserve this. Yeah, you don't deserve a thing. That's pretty bad. You don't deserve a thing. So, <clears throat> all right, verse 20. All right, crank it up. Here's where a good old mother wants to... Uh, this, this, this reminds they call me... call Mama in. You know, this this reminds me of... I've done a lot of refing and played a lot of sports. <laughs> The, ma the mama who thinks their Johnny mm -hmm. is the best, right. needs the Foul, first. Foul, safe, out, whatever yeah. is appropriate. Yeah. The mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons. And, and they're kind of related. Yeah. Kneeling before him, and she asked for him something. He said to her, what do you want? She said to him, say that these two sons of mine are to sit, one at your right and one at your left in your kingdom. Now, right hand and left hand are positions of power and authority. And, and it's envisioning the type of a kingdom that he didn't come to do in the first place. Yeah. Um, but they have messianic notions that he's coming to do an earthly kingdom and the Jews will reign over everybody and get all the good stuff, but which he's not coming to do. He's actually bringing something far better than that. This kind of goes against what Jesus says, who is the greatest in the kingdom? Yeah, it does, the one who does serves, it? <laughs> Not the one who sits you know, yeah, in a special yeah. seat. Oh. He's actually going to get all the Pharisees, all over the Pharisees in Matthew 23. Right, for their, come and said, please give them servant roles in your kingdom. For their special seats. He said to her, all right, I said that. Jesus answered, verse 22, you do not know what you are asking. And that's absolutely true. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? They said to him, we are able. So here's the cup that he's about to talk to him about. If you want to have equal part of rule and reign with Jesus, mm -hmm. you have to have equal part mm -hmm. with his suffering and, yeah. and loss. And you can't handle that. No, you can't. <laughs> you, can't you can't handle the truth. No. One, if you tried, even Moses tried to be an intercessor for people. He, he, he is not a perfect, no. they would have died and just be dead. Yes. Only Jesus can fulfill this role, can take on the sins of the world die and be raised again as the Messiah, as the Son of God. So having a Messiah complex is not a good idea. No. We already have a Messiah. Let's, mm -hmm. leave, let's leave it at that. Yes. And, um... <clears throat> he said to them, verse 23. All right, there I am. He said to them, You will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and my left hand is not mine to grant, but it is for those whom it has been, pre be been prepared by my Father. And when the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. Mm -hmm. But Jesus called to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be among you. But whoever would be great among you must be, must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. So he's taking actually all the things that he says and combining into one. One biggie. Even as the Son of Man came not to serve, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus, while here on earth, does he is he sitting on a throne? No, and he created the whole shooting match himself. He, he came to serve, and the fact that they're wanting almost a higher earthly position than Jesus' own earthly position. Yeah, he wants to be a servant like Jesus. We want to rule. But ultimately, this goes back to their idea of the kingdom. Yeah. They still don't get it. He thinks when he comes back, 
he's gonna be reigning on that earthly throne, and Jerusalem's gonna be the thing again. Or actually, or, they're gonna die yeah, for him. They're gonna die for him. So they will drink his cup. Yes, they will, as much as they can. As much as they can. Yeah. And so, once again, this this kingdom life, if when you know us being ministers, sometimes we have to deal with the worst and the best of people. Yes, we do. And one of I still think one of the worst attributes to have in the church that is the most infectious in the church is the what can the church do for me? And it's all about when decisions are made. Well, that's not good for me. I don't want that. I don't desire that. Over that. It's a pride issue. It's a self-absorbed issue. Mm -hmm. What about others? like time of service meetings. <laughs> Maybe the time that is chosen accommodates 95% of the congregation better than you, but you want to be accommodated. Yeah, it's just it's not that your opinion can't be heard or no. that it can't be considered, but ultimately it's not about you. It's no. not even about me. Elders in the congregation who make decisions for the congregation will never decide anything other than biblical things. They yeah. never decide anything this methodology that everybody will agree with. Never. That's just the way it works. In fact, sometimes in their wisdom, they realize that a decision would be more expedient for the kingdom that more people disagree with than agree with. But we're supposed to, as long as they're not doing anything wrong, go along with them. Well, and here's another side effect of that, is we get these we get these um, statements that, you know, hey, no one's ever done this for me. No one's ever called me. No one's ever... You called so-and-so. Well, <laughs> I always try to turn that phrase around on them. Well, who have you called? Exactly. And, and it's not that... Because it's not our job. Yeah, it's not... And I'm not trying to get to them, you'll get calls when you give calls. But your main priority should be, what are you doing to serve not how are you being served. So Jesus meant that servant stuff? Yeah. Wow. It's, it's not that you won't be served and you shouldn't expect to be served because if I'm serving you and you're serving me, then we're both going to be served. Mm -hmm. I'm not serving myself. You're not serving yourself. And we're meeting each other's needs. And you know what? I may need help in saying, you know what? I've missed something. Mm -hmm. But don't come to me as a person who's constantly wanting, 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 and you're not giving, 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 giving. Paul, when he addresses the church at Corinth, says there are some members of the congregation, the body, who are going to need more attention than others. And that's true. And that's just how life works. And they'll need more honor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right. Kind of ends with uh, Jesus, once again, heal healing people. There he goes again. As they went out of Jericho, <coughs> a great crowd followed him and behold there were two blind men sitting by the roadside and when they heard that jesus was passing by they cried out lord have mercy on us son of david the crowd rebuked them telling them to be more to be silent but they cried out all the more lord have mercy on us son of david stopping jesus called them and said what do you what do you want me to do for you they said lord let our eyes be opened and jesus in pity touched their eyes and immediately they recovered their sight and followed him. You think there's more to eyes being open than just eyes being open? Well, Jesus has, you know, has been trying to get us to understand. Once again, they're coming to Jesus and asking the right question. They know Jesus has what they need. And blind, they've ascribed messianic things to him that some of the sighted people won't do. Yeah, and the crowds, once again, are upset that there are people who are coming. Don't bother him. Jesus wants to be bothered. Yeah, let, let Jesus make the call on that, okay? Yeah, let Jesus make the call. So it's a kind of a good way to kind of tie up that, that section because Jesus, once again, is showing over and over and over again his servant heart. Exactly. His pity, his compassion. And if you don't have compassion, you won't serve. No. And, and the decisions he makes that people disagree with are the decisions a servant makes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that is kind of a good conclusion to that section. And then Jesus has been hinting he's been heading towards where? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And we're, he's going to be there next year. Things chapter. are about to heat up. Things are about to heat up. And uh, we're about to, once again, the story changes this last week. His last week, his Passion Week, is a whole, or when he's in Jerusalem, is a whole different ball game it than is. what we've seen so far. It's going to be interesting, exciting, depressing, yeah. <laughs> scary, all yeah. kind of things. But ultimately needed. Very needed. Very needed. It has to go down that way. Yep. God preordained the plan. 
So anyway, there's Matthew chapter 20. I can't believe we're already 20 chapters into Matthew. It's been, wow. it doesn't feel like that long. But uh, we love you. Yes, we do. God bless.